Hey guys, alright, so this is a continuation of the last video about importing an airfoil um, into SolidWorks. I'm now going to show you guys how to start sketching onto this uh, airfoil that you have in here. Um, currently we scaled this up to 12 inches, the, uh, the core at least is now 12 inches. And uh, so what we want to do is edit the, uh, edit the sketch a little bit so we can actually put our lightning holes in there and so we can actually put our uh, sparks for our water jet. So we're going to go over here into this uh, feature tree, expand this boss extrude down with that arrow and then left click on the sketch go to the edit sketch okay um, make sure you're normal to the sketch okay that's good. Um, first thing you want to do is actually we want to fix the entire airfoil right um, and we want to fix it because if we start dimensioning stuff to this airfoil, um, the the spline itself might move instead of the new lines that we're sketching. We want that. So in order to fix it, uh, just right click on your spline, and you see this little anchor, make fixed. Click that down. Press Escape a couple times, and then now your line is black again, which we figured out in the first video, which means your sketch is fully defined. Um, so let's say we want to design a double I-beam spar that is located at the cord to cord of this airflow or of this rib, okay? Um, so there's a couple tools um, that I'm going to be working with and uh, I'm actually going to be using hotkeys on my keyboard that I set up, and I'm actually show you how to set those up real quick. You're going to go up into this options tab, click on the arrow to the right of it, go down to customize, and then on this tab, click keyboard. And then so on this key tab, um, there's different uh, functions that I use a lot um, when I'm sketching, such as a smart dimension and center line. Okay, so let's say we search for smart dimension, type in smart. And you can see I already have a shortcut label as D here. So if I type T D on my keyboard, it starts the smart dimension. The other thing I use a lot is center line. Which is here, and I uh, um, applied the value of C to it. Okay, so that's a, a nice way so you can kind of move around and SolidWorks sketches a little quicker. So go ahead and click OK. Also, another cool hotkey if you press S, this little uh, window should pop up, and all this is is the same thing as you have here. It's just it can be convenient instead of moving up there all the time, it's just wherever your cursor is, press S and you can grab a center line or you can grab a line or stuff like that. So, anyways, let's say we want to spar at a quarter cord, at the quarter cord of this airfoil. Um, I'm going to start a center line. I'm pressing C, going from the origin. And um, you'll see this little yellow horizontal line. That means this line is horizontal. So we want it horizontal, so that's good. I'm going to mention this. Um, at the quarter cord, okay. So since my cord right now is 12 inches, 12 divided by 4 is 3. So this uh, distance here represents the quarter cord point. So I'm going to draw another center line vertical, okay. And these are just reference uh, lines right now. That's why they're construction lines. Um, if you guys don't know how to get to a construction line, it's right here. It's in the drop down here, center line. Let's say uh, later on you want to actually use a construction line. If you just click on it and um, uncheck this construction for construction box, it's now a solid line. But since it's just different for us, we want to keep it a construction line. Okay? And, uh, okay, so that's good. And we're going to start building the parts of our spar caps. Kind of make a vertical line down, a horizontal line across, a vertical line up. We're connecting to our splines. And now we want to make sure this uh, cap is centered across. So we're going to select here and here. Oh, okay. I'm doing this by holding down control and selecting each line. 
I'm using the center line as a mirroring point um, or symmetric line. So after selecting those lines, go over here and click symmetric. What is going on? Oh yeah, there it goes. So it is now symmetric. Okay, you can see that little symmetric line thing. Awesome. We're gonna same thing with the bottom. Vertical lines, horizontal lines. And we're gonna make these symmetric about here. Great. Now we also want this to be exactly on top of this one. Um, so we're gonna make this line here collinear with this line. So control select both lines. Make them collinear. And do that with both pairs. Okay, great. So, um, this is where our spar cap is going to be notched in right now. It might be hard to visualize this. Um, you'll see it in a little bit. But, um, how we're actually going to be building this thing. Uh, okay, so let's say we know the thickness of our spar cap is going to be 3 sixteenths. Uh, we're going to do a smart dimension of that section there. 3 divided by 16. We're going to also do it to this bound. 3 divided by 16. Good. Now we're going to need to make some notches for our web that's in our spar. So we're going to go ahead and draw some of these lines here using that quick command S to do that. Now we also want this and this to be symmetric. Okay, So we do that same control, select all three lines and then make it a symmetric relation. Escape out of those things. And um, we also know that our thickness is still 3 sixteenths. Okay. So that's good. 3 divided by 16. Great. Looking good. So, um, so far that's kind of what our spar is going to interface in here. Um, so as for these heights, so right now this this guy can go up and down. So we need to give that guy a dimension. And uh, that dimension is going to come from this distance here. 1.0581. So control C is to copy it. We're going to delete it actually. Then dimension from this bottom line to there. Paste that number and divide it by two. Okay. We're gonna make this line and this line collinear. Good. And uh, let's say we want the spacing between here and here to be point two. Okay. So. We're getting a little closer. Um, it's all looking pretty good. Now we're going to start trimming some things out. So go to Trim IDs. Make sure you have Trim Closest selected. And we're just going to trim out these um, notches there. So, so yeah, that's uh, we're almost there. We just need to trim out the rest of the spline. And we will do that now. So if we go back into trim, we select this and select that. And we select this and that. And then, so as you can see, it kind of blew up on. Um, that's because I am having a bunch of this stuff around here. Whoa, don't want to do that. That's because I'm having a lot of this stuff fixed. Um, so we can go ahead and delete some of these mates in here, or these relations at least. No, not that one. Mm. All right. We want to make sure our airfoil stays fixed, so keep that stuff like that. 
Okay. I'm just kind of deleting these things. They're redundant because you have things that are fixed. So if you actually go in and delete enough of them, you can kind of try to get lucky on which ones you delete. So, anyways, so now all the all, all the um, relations are are uh, okay now. They're not overdefined or anything. So now our switch is good. And uh, so if we exit our sketch, it extrudes it back out for us. And so that is our new rib. So it's looking good. Um, let's say you want to punch out some lightning holes in here. You're going to edit your sketch again. And uh, you can actually just sketch out some circles in here. Okay, so that's looking good. We'll do another scroll back here. Cool. And then exit your sketch, and it'll punch out the circles for you. So that's looking good. Um, this again right here is where the spar is being built and how we uh, join the rib up. And I'll build that next for you guys as an example. And... Uh, Yep, so that'll conclude making the uh, cutouts of the rib. And next we'll go into building the spar and then an assembly. So uh, keep watching.